Salwate. That's how the Romans probably would have said hello. So, the other day, I was procrastinating. You know, as I want to do. And talking to all my friends about the newer uh, series of Doctor Who. Newer series. Anyway, um, and I came to a conclusion. A revelation, you might say. About what actually the problem, if there is one, actually is. The problem with the new where series is of Doc 2 is time. Well, time and pacing. Allow me to explain. And to explain, I will hark back to my days of GCC English and use P. That's point, explanation, examples. Except I'm not going to use P, I'm going to sort of twist it around, eep, and then twist that bit more. So it's actually not P, it's something completely different. But I sort of wanted to make references to GC English, so it made me look educated and yeah. Anyway, I will give you proofs and uh, evidence of my point. When I explain it further, and then I'll tell you how we can solve this. So, firstly, let's take a look at Moffat's. What are generally what are most considered to be Moffat's good episodes, ones that really aren't really disputed. So they're mostly ones in the series. Is uh, pre well previous series basically I, I, I'll, I'll list them now yeah so we have the empty child uh, the, the two-parter serial blink science in the library the, the two-parter again uh, live hour the big bang two-parter impossible astronaut two-parter and a good man goes to war that takes us pretty much uh, halfway through series six now what do most of these have in common well most of them are two parters. Doctor Dances, The Science in the Library, Big Bang, and an Impossible Astronaut. Uh, the ones that remain, well, Blink is, of course, uh, an exception that was better for all, for, for all the more for being a more simpler episode. While uh, a good man, well, Live Hour was actually an hour long extension of another episode. It was actually an hour, not the normal five minutes. So I regard that as an extended episode, so that still fits my pattern. And a good man goes to war, while being a single episode in and of itself, was deliberately left on a cliffhanger to resolve in a, a Let's Kill Hitler. So in a sense, it could be basically a two-parter, not in terms of story, uh, but in terms of storylines. Moffat didn't have to resolve his point. And that, that's my point, that Moffat can't write good episodes for anything less than an hour long. He has too much story and not enough time to put it in. Uh, before I go on, let me just uh, give honourable honour mentions to uh, The Girl in the Fireplace. Now, The Girl in the Fireplace was by no means a bad episode. I actually kind of liked it. It was a good episode, but rel relative to Moffat's other episodes, it's not one that really stands out. It's not rubbish, it doesn't stand out as a bad episode, and it's not brilliant. It's a good episode, I really enjoyed it, but when you think back to Rusty Davis era Moffat episodes, it's not the one that comes to mind straight away. And also, uh, I, I was wondering whether or not to put Time of Angels to part into my list of uh, Unimacy Good episodes. Some people don't like it because it spoils the angels, other people, uh, other people like it because it's a good episode. I think it's a good episode, I liked it. So I personally would put it in, but some people might dispute that, so I didn't. Personally, I found the angels scarier in a two-parter than I did in their debut episode. I think that's just because I find uh, menacing threats more scary than uh, subtle ones. I, for example, didn't find the child in the empty child freaky, but uh, a lot of people did. I didn't find the angels in Blink freaky. Don't get me wrong, I loved the episode. It was fantastic in how it was set out. It was, it was a unique episode. I loved it. I just didn't find them freaky. I did find them quite scary in Time of Angels with a more menacing threat. I think this is a personal thing. I find episodes with, I find horror uh, based stories more menacing with, when you don't know what's going to happen next rather than, you know, subtle threats. So now let's take a look at uh, series seven. Now, Moffat's plan for series seven was a blockbuster episode in uh, every episode, a, a Hollywood movie, as it were, squashed into an episode. 
and that's where the problem lies. He he's trying to he's basically forcing he's basically forcing other writers to put massive stories into a short time. That, that spoils the pacing of an episode. You put too much story into a, a, a too short time. L literally, I could list any other series of episodes, and they would be substantially improved if they were given at least fifteen more minutes extra time. And I frequently watch uh, vlogs by. Uh, Mr. Tyler's reviews, and he he comes to the same conclusion in many episodes that he fe feels that the ending is rushed. Um, some examples uh, would be the power of three. Brilliant episode, and when he got to the end, and it was just rushed. The ending was completely rushed, and it felt like there was more story, and it just, like, it just got chopped down in editing and stuck on the end. Hide, which was a which which was. An episode split people, but it was a good episode until it got sort of midway to, or between midway and towards the end, where you just got more loads of plot points rushed in, and that's basically the problem. I mean, even if we go back to uh, older episodes, um, the Wedding River song was an interesting and unique episode, but was rushed. Um, loads of episodes, were, were, nearly every episode by Stephen Moffat. And every nearly every series seven episode would be much better if it was given longer screen time. And there's further proof for this. Sh uh, Stephen Moffat and also Mark Gattis produce and write most of Sherlock. Uh, Stephen Thompson also writes a third episode every series. Um, now, when Gattis and Moffat wrote the pilot episode for Sherlock, it was an hour-long special pilot to prelude a sort of a more uh, seasoned uh, style seri uh, series in that you're gonna have more episodes in the same Doctor Who was basically it wasn't gonna be like three special three episodes it was gonna be more episodes but short time they made a pilot sh showed us the BBC BBC were like oh my god this is awesome but take it back make it into an hour and a half episode and redo your whole pacing keyword pacing Longer episode. See the pattern? And obviously, the Mac came back, and it was a brilliant episode, and uh, which preluded a brilliant series. And Sherlock is awesome. It's so you can describe Sherlock. So that's my conclusion. Steve Moffat is a brilliant writer still. He hasn't lost his touch. It's just that he's trying to write big stories in short episodes. So how do we solve this? Well, we don't solve it, but how can the BBC solve it? They have two things they can do. Make every episode at least an hour, preferably an hour and a half long. Now, this is the most impre- uh, Now, if you're going to make it an hour long, that won't be too much of an issue because they film nearly enough film an hour anyway and then cut it down in uh, editing post-production. So it won't be that much of an effort on the uh, production team. An hour and a half long, well, obviously it would be brilliant having an hour and a half long to two every week would be impractical because they didn't have to film twice as much and that put strains on the production team. And what's your solution? Go back to how Doctor Who was in the classic era. That is, have serialised uh, seasons. You'd have a couple of serials, that is, stories, every season, but each story would be split across long episodes. Doctor Who was traditionally 25 minutes long, but each, but that was 25 minutes for 25 minutes episodes, traditionally it varied, there wasn't a fixed number. For 25 episode series, uh, for one story, and obviously that varied at some points, it was actually 45 minutes long, other points it was half an hour, it, it, it changed. But it worked, and what was also a big uh, appeal of Doctor Who, a, 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 a theme, a big part of Doctor Who mythos, was cliffhangers. Cliffhangers were uh, a big part of Doctor Who. Each week would end, each, each episode would end in a cliffhanger. And a lot of them memorable, which, is, which was what appealed to you. You always, you know, in the same way each uh, EastEnders episode ended in a cliffhanger, except EastEnders is a soap and Doctor Who is a sci fi show. And it, it was part of Doctor Who and that, it worked. It was brilliant. Then we go back to the new Doctor Who, each episode self contained. Uh, self contained, I mean, Doctor Who doesn't really suffer from the thing that most sci-fi uh, uh, shows suffer from, which is big reset buttons that usually has consequences. If there are consequences from an episode, it will, you know, hack back to it later. 
the exception of course being journey to the centre of TARDIS which let us down the respect of having a big reset button at the end. But mostly it doesn't. So that's what we should, we should do. We should have either have hour long episodes every week or we should go back to serialised. And I think the latter would be better because it worked. And you know, I, I, I welcome your comments and your opinions and your ideas and any rebuttal you might offer put in the comments below and I might if there's enough do a, a never. Uh, I, I might return to this matter and discuss your points that you've that you've that you've sent me. But yeah, what do you think? Do you think I've hit on the problem though too? It's not. Steve Moffat's a bad writer. I still think he's an awesome writer. I just think he's trying to cram too much into sh too short an episode. I mean, this is the Doctor Who's flag show, so it should have you know an hour long. It's it, it deserves it. 